100 million so-called black African Americans. So he got the hey man, you you like Freddy Krueger? <laughs> yeah, you got his shirt on. Oh yeah, you did that, man. You did that. Yeah, I didn't think I was from Europe. I hey, think about it. hey, what, what, you, you, do you love America? Yeah, sure. Why? I like the nature. You like the nature? Yeah, I, I don't know America well, but I love the national parks and everything. You love the national parks? Yeah. How do you feel about the fact that you're walking on Native American bones right now? How do you feel about 77 million Native Americans had to get slaughtered in order for you to come over here and like America? Yeah? How do, you, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? No. You don't celebrate Thanksgiving? No. So you're not eating no turkey in a week? No, I'll be back in Europe in a week. You'll be back in Europe in a week? No. So you, what, what, what country are you from? I'm from Holland. From Holland? Yeah, Amsterdam. From Amsterdam. Is that an Edomite? Okay. So do you do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? Well, it's maybe a philosophical philosophical way of answering that, but I do believe I am the father's son. You believe you're the father's son? Well, one of his children. You you believe that you're one of the most high God's children? Well, I think all of us are uh, belong to now, let me ask you something. Um did you read that in the Bible, or did you just hear that all your life? No, no, I just, I just, let, let me put it differently, I feel connected to God. Why do you feel connected to God? Like, what, what makes you feel connected to God? There has to be something that makes you feel like that, right? Uh, you got this are, Bubba Kishop, hold Caesar up. Is, is this the God you're talking about right here? Is that him? Without the horns. No, no, I, I don't see it. I don't see it visualized it like that. Oh, okay. Did, did you, uh, are you aware that according to the Bible, who you call Jesus Christ is a so-called black man? I don't really mind. I don't, you don't mind that? I don't, I don't think about it too much. I don't go to church. Do you know that according to the Bible, go ahead, uh, man, we're going to read the Bible. Does God love everybody? You say God loves everybody? Yes, sir. All right, what about you? You say God loves everybody? Let's see what the Bible says. Romans 9 and 13. Now, let's see, if these, let's see if these people know what they're talking about. Go ahead. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So, according to the Bible, God hates the Edomites, the people who come from their forefather Esau. Now, that is the so-called white man. So God hates white people. How you guys feel about that? You still love God? I, I hate white people too. So Why do you hate white people? Are, do, are you gonna celebrate Thanksgiving? No. I mean, you I are? Know. There's always something. To be There's always something. It, so 77 million Native Americans dead on this ground right now. Something to be thankful for? What about 77 million Native Americans that you're going to go cut turkey to? Is that something to be thankful for? I don't eat meat, so I'm not Well, what about the dresses? What about the pumpkin pie? I know you people like pumpkin pie. Right? What about that? So you're going to, ce you're going to celebrate Thanksgiving, so you got to understand something. 77 million Native Americans were slaughtered so you can celebrate Thanksgiving. What you got, up? Revelation would be perfect. Hey, are you guys all going to celebrate Thanksgiving? No. Who, who, that's right, brother. Who celebrate Thanksgiving over here? Get that up. We want, we want them to have their judgment right now because they think it's sweet. They think they can cut turkey and eat dressing and eat pumpkin pie and, and, and sit around here and laugh like the Most High God isn't going to judge them for it. You guys got judgment coming, and rightfully so. Do you believe in justice? I'm going to hell either way. I don't care. Oh, man, you, you, you don't even know anything about hell yet. When the chain is around your neck and the whip is on your back, then you know something about him. Go ahead. Revelation 13 and 10. Right. He that leadeth into captivity. So it is no secret that the so-called white man has led a number of God's chosen people into captivity. Shall what? 
shall go into captivity. So according to the Bible, if you ever led a people into captivity, you have to go into captivity. Give me Isaiah 14 and 21. Right? See, this is the balance that we're talking about. Go ahead. Do not kill us with the sword. Now we just got done talking about 77 million Native Americans being killed. Right? With the sword. A sword is a weapon of war. A sword can be an actual sword. A sword can be a knife. A sword can be a gun. A sword is a weapon of war. Something to kill somebody. Right? Go ahead. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So the people who led people into captivity have to go into captivity. The people who kill people with the sword have to be killed with the sword. And according to the Bible, the saints who are walking around on this earth are patiently waiting for that day to happen. Whoever the saints are right now are waiting for people who led them into captivity to go into captivity and people who killed them with the sword to be killed with the sword. Do you got that? Go ahead. Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children. So the Bible says prepare slaughter for his children. Right? The, the, you know how you guys get the Thanksgiving turkey ready? You pump it up with the juices and you put the stuffing in it. You might throw some cheese in it. I don't know how you people like to eat. I, I, right? I am from Holland. Right, right. Yeah, but you're still an Edomite. You're going, you're, but this is what happened. I, I, so your forefathers, your your forefathers did certain things for you to be able to stand in here, to be able to be standing here right now, looking at us and having this conversation. Holland built the slave ships. That's where you come from, right? But go ahead, read that from the top, because the Most High God has a judgment on you. Go ahead. Prepare slaughter for his children. For what? For the iniquity of their fathers. So according to the Bible, for the iniquities that your father has committed, you have to pay for that. Right? Uh, 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 an analogy that a lot of brothers will use is they'll use the analogy that picture you went to a restaurant and ran up a tab and you were with your grandfather and your dad and they just died on the spot. Who has to pay for that? You got to pay. Right? Yeah, how you feel about that? It's, it's fair? Yeah. That's right. At the end, the bill has to be paid. Right? And, the, and, and You got something? Go ahead. This is Psalm 137, starting at verse 7. And I got to be honest with you, Holly. I'm going to call you Holly because you're from Holland, right? No pun intended. But I got to be honest with you, Holly. Your judgment is already written, but it is, it is refreshing to hear a so-called white man come up here and be honest. Most of the time, they're not like that. They laugh, they scoff, and they scoot off on their little scooters, right? But go ahead. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. So the Bible says, remember the children of Edom. The children of Edom, obviously, was still from that person that God hates called Esau. So in the book of Psalms, it says, remember these people. Do not forget them. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, waste it. Racist. So, so in the day of your destruction, who stood by and said, "Burn it to the ground, burn it to the ground," right? That's a, that's a, that's a race it, race it, not a raise it, raise it. You see that? Go ahead. Even to the foundations thereof. Right. Oh, daughter of Babylon. Oh, daughter of Babylon. What you're standing in right now is is modern day Babylon. That's what America is. That's why America upholds the gay agenda. You see what I'm saying? America um um worships money, right? Uh, there's. Er if you think about it, all of America's heroes are, are murderers and slave owners. There's not one hero or one um, holiday that America celebrates that doesn't uphold the rape, rob, and murder of another people. This is modern-day Babylon right now, right? Everything that the Bible says is right, America, modern-day Babylon, will say is left. But go ahead. O daughter of Babylon, right. who ought to be destroyed. Who ought to be destroyed because there's going to come a day where... where America is going to be destroyed. America is going to be hit with thermal nuclear missiles. It's going to happen, right? And rightfully so, because if you think about it, every powerful kingdom has met their demise. So it would be downright arrogant um, and just not really logical and not realistic for somebody to think that America was going to reign like this forever. Missiles are going to hit America according to the Bible. Go ahead. Happy shall he be! That rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So you got to understand, we have pictures on these signs up here. And we have pictures of so-called black babies being fed to alligators, right? And what they, so they used to take a, 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 a so-called black baby and they would use it for alligator bait just so they could catch the alligator and make something like, um, something like belts or something like wallets or something like lampshades, right? Or even if they were real sick, they would even wear, wear like a jacket or something like that. 
So the Bible says, happy shall he be to reward them as they, as they have rewarded you. Right? So, so, so when judgment comes on the so-called white man, according to the Bible, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are going to be happy to reward the so-called white man the same way that the so-called white man has rewarded them. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. So you got to understand and correct me if I'm wrong on this. Our brother Christopher Columbus was here. What he would do with the so-called Native Americans is, is he would cut the pregnant woman's belly and he would rip the babies out and what they would do is they would take those babies and they would dash them against the stone. Right? So in the Bible, it says that that is going to happen because it, because you guys did it. Give me Proverbs 11 and 1. Because you got to understand something that the Most High God, the God that you said you're a child of, he is a God of balance. Right? What people what people do is they is they if they tend to say that he's all love, but he's not all love. Just like he loves, he hates. You see what I'm saying? So so we got to and if we're made in his image, it's just common sense because we love and we hate. You see that? But go ahead. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. A what? A false balance is abomination to the Lord. So the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Give me that in Ecclesiastes. I the Bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, so a false balance would be somebody that's all love. A false balance would be somebody that's all hate. You see what I'm saying? So just like the Lord loves, the Lord hates. An abomination, we got to understand something. We can go into the scriptures right now, and we can see that homosexuality is an abomination to the Lord. Are you a homosexual? Okay. All right, cool. So the Bible says a homo uh, homosexuality is an abomination to the Lord. So basically I'm saying... and. And if you're a homosexual, according to the Bible, you are to be put to death, right? So, the Lord looks at a false balance the same way that he looks at homosexuality. It is a downright abomination, right? Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. Right. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So to everything there's a season, and there's a time for every purpose. Right? So just like there's a time to do this, there's a time to do that. Just like there's a time to go here, there's a time to go there. Go ahead, Art. Verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. So there's a time for every season. There's a time to love. True. But there's also a time to hate. Right? It's not all lovey-dovey season. And so when you go into these Christian churches, that's what they tell you. Right? So I don't know if you're familiar with the case that happened um, in Dallas. Well, the Dallas police officer, she was a woman, but what she did is she entered a man's apartment and she shot that man while he was eating cereal on his couch, right? And so then she goes to court, she goes to trial, and they gave her 10 years. But what ended up happening was the so-called black woman, the so-called black bailiff, um, and, and I forgot who else, but they, they comforted this lady and, and the victim's brother. But they comforted this lady. They told her, oh, you know what? We love her. They gave her a Bible and said, just read John 3, 16, right? But the, does the Most High God condone murderers? Is, is, a, is a murder a righteous thing? It's, it's not a righteous thing. So according to the Bible, that lady is supposed to be put to death because it's not all lovey-dovey. And so what your people have done is they have created a doctrine and they have and they have gave it to our people and they have our people pumping this doctrine out of the Christian churches into our communities and it's an all-love doctrine. No matter what they did to you, you have to love them, right? But, but we don't have to, my, my, should we love what the Most High God hates? Should, so if God hates you, why would we love you? Right? So we got to understand that. Give me Isaiah 14 and 1. So I, I'm going to read this prophecy to you to, to let you know what's going to happen to you if you're still around in that time. Right? When the sky cracks open and an angry black man comes through there by the name of Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Because he's coming. And he's not coming to play video games and hopscotch and, 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 you know, jump rope and double dutch and things like that with you. He's coming for vengeance. But go ahead. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. So the Lord's going to have mercy on Jacob. You got to understand that the Israelites, the 12 tribes of Israel, they come from the loins of a man named Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel. Right? Go ahead. And will yet choose Israel right. and set them in their own land. So when that day comes, when Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, comes back, he's going to choose Israel, which are, according to biblical evidence, historical evidence, and archaeological evidence, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that are right here in the Americas in these. 
So when the Lord comes back, he's going to choose the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. Read on. And the strangers shall be joined with them. So the strangers are everybody else that are not of the 12 tribes of Israel. So they're going to be joined with us. Right? Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. They're going to hold on tight. And the people shall take them right. and bring them to their place. So Jacob, the Israelites, are going to take these strangers and bring them to their place. Right? And the homeland is Israel. Going to take these strangers and bring them to their place. Read on. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Yeah, what? And the house of Israel shall possess them. So the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans are going to possess the so-called white man, but not only you, the so-called Chinese man, the so-called Arab man, and the so-called African man, and every other nation that has had a part in the downfall and the demise of the nation of Israel. Go ahead. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So you're going to be possessed in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And just like we were once your captives, now you're going to be our captives, according to the Bible. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors, and we're going to rule over you. Right? So basically, the message that we have for you today is not a we love you message. It's not a John 3.16 message. It's not a, man, you know what, take our flyer and call us and you get up here with us and, and repent and be converted. That's not for you. Our message that we have for you is to get ready for slavery, Esau. Ah. That's the message that we have for you. So walk up and down, walk up and down these streets, right? Walk on Native American bones, enjoy the sights that you see and really cherish it. Because with thermal nuclear warheads and missiles come and hit this place, if you still survive, you're going to be a slave. So I would advise you to get as strong as you can. I know brothers that are talking about making you guys mow the lawn with your teeth. Fair is fair. So with that, what's up? Uh, I, want, I want to ask you a question. Do you feel like, do you love everybody? Or do you have a sense about, like, there's an opportunity for love for everybody? Okay. So you're, you're sitting here listening, and I'm kind of intrigued by you just sitting here listening. Um, so I want to know, do you feel sorry for what happened to so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Of uh, course, which, which, Would you be willing to prove that? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Brother read in Isaiah 1421, it says, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquities of their fathers. The reason black Hispanics and Native Americans went into slavery uh, 500 years ago, still slaves here in this yeah, land. Sure, it, the reason that happened is because our forefathers sinned. They went off and yeah. into sin, so we had to pay for it. Well, I, so, I'm very aware and cognizant of our history and what has happened. So I, I want to give you an opportunity because we're we're filming this, right? We come out here and we edify more people that than are standing out here right now. I'm, I want to give you an opportunity to show us that your words have some weight, that you mean what you say, and that we'll we'll give you something from the Bible to see if you actually no, mean I with will, it. I will, I will tell you something else. Go ahead. For me, what resonates with me, uh -huh. and that's my only truth, and that's why I will not use words, I don't read the Bible, okay. I don't go to church, is how I live. And I serve as a volunteer of two different foundations, and I was in Uganda, Ethiopia, and Kenya for six months last year, working as a volunteer 
representing our solar energy capital people. So you, you serve people as you put action behind your words that's to show your I, love. Because love is an action word, right? For me, everything else is words and reflection and intention. And I can hold a lot of value for a lot of people. Okay. But for me personally, that would not that would not reflect anything. For me, people have to at least try. Like you said, you have to earn it, right? Yeah, you have to earn it. respect, that's love. What I, that's what I've been doing all my life. Okay. Not because so I, I, I'll give you an opportunity to earn, uh, no, I, as, as far as credibility I goes, am, am of orphan. what you're saying. Cause I you, had, I'm an orphan, okay? Both my parents died of cancer. I'm more or less alone in this world. I've yeah, been going to Africa for many, for many times, serving people. Okay, I so, help and I give. So you, 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 you said that you me. understand that for what happened to us, there's a recompense or a reward coming for the people who did this to us. It's only justice. You said you believe in justice, right? Well, I believe in justice, but I, I'm not into property. Okay. I can't, well, I can't what, what would be justice for the rape, rob, and murder of every nation that so-called Caucasians go into? Because every, every nation, even Europe right now, you say you're from Europe, you're from Holland. The original people of those lands weren't Caucasian people. You guys went into those lands and stole it from the uh, from the indigenous people. I actually, I don't know about this. I have no uh, no knowledge about the history of Holland going further back than 2,000 years ago. I don't read the Bible, don't go to church. I know about the history of, of, of America and, and, and Native Americans. And it's terrible, but it's okay, terrible. I want. I, I, I'm. No, I'm I, I have to cut you off. Um, I want to see if you're a man of your word, if you're a man of action, if you, uh, if I can believe what you say, because you're saying a lot of things. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, me personally, I believe you so-called Caucasian or white people are liars. That's right. Because that's what the Bible calls you. That's all you've shown us. You made. 500 treaties with the Native Americans, since we're speaking about Natives right now, and you broke every single one of them. So, real quick, I want to get Isaiah 49 23. Go ahead. Isaiah 49 and 23. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. So the Bible says, for us serving you, your kings and your queens, the people in the highest state of your own nation, are going to be serving us, right? Go ahead. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth. Says you're going to have to bow down to us with your face towards the earth. Are you willing to do that in humility to show that you are sorry for the actions of your people, of your nation? I live it every day. I, I, for me, my truth is that I am a good person independent any culture, any what, what's your standard of good? What's your moral compass that defines what good is in your life? How, how you want to be treated. Yourself. Okay. That's my truth and that's my nature. And I greatly respect what you guys are doing, but I'm not... I, for me, I don't need to convince anyone else that I am being truthful because I need to be truthful to myself. And you guys are also truthful to yourself. Everybody I don't believe a so-called white man can be truthful to himself. No, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to I, believe I don't it. believe you guys understand what love is, right? I don't believe you understand anything about sacrifice or humanity. I mean, every every time you interact with another nation of people, you treat them inhumane. Yeah, but that's the thing is, you also have to know that the generalization that you came up with now does not apply to everybody. Yeah, he, he, he definitely knows. You know of uh, Swarthy Pete? What? Swarthy Pete? Yeah, of course. Yeah, see, they, they all know because it's something you celebrate. You know that's uh that's mocking in so-called Holland, Negroes? In Holland, that used to be celebrated. It's not celebrated anymore. It's, up. it's a whole debate in Holland now, and they have discussed it. So they that's out it. completely. Nobody is celebrating that at all. It's getting out. It's, it's getting out, but it's not yet. It's, it's, it's still happening. It's, it's being discussion. 
Okay, so discussion, it, one, one whether you're debating one about not doing it or not, you guys are mocking, you're, you're celebrating and benefiting even from the demise of my people. What you want, what you want to see is proof and result of change behavior and a change narrative. But you're not going to get it. Exactly, so because people, you people no, don't care not, about nobody. You're not gonna that, get the it reason we can't get the change that we're looking for. Who is a descendant of, of a colonist? Because I believe, and I'm the to myself. Well, you know, you benefit from everything your forefathers did, building right. those slave ships. Right. You get to come into this land, even Holland. That's you not your land. You raped, robbed, and murdered over there just like you did, your people did I over here. Change, can I? I cannot go back in time to change that. I cannot nullify You can, life. but like we said, we, we're, we we're giving myself. you... No, no, look, it starts with baby steps, right? Everything change starts with baby steps we're not expecting everything change overnight but it will right do you want say your house shall come back as a thief in the no, night do you want the it's, it's a wrap do you want the descendants of the colonists to live a better life or do you, do you want them all to kill themselves because i choose to live a better life without narrative without the bible without promises without bowing down by okay but we're speaking man. about reality regardless yeah, of what reality. you think about prophecy we were speaking about justice. You say you believe in justice. I believe. So what would be justice for taking us into slavery, killing millions of us still to this day? Yeah, but I'm not a judge. You're not a judge, but you say you believe in justice, so you have to have some kind of idea or concept about what you believe should I'm happen. Not, I'm not that smart. What I believe should happen is that... I think you will. I mean, you, uh, no, you, I think that you feel a busting. Here. So, but when you first came up here, we established that you believed in the Bible. I believe in God. Okay, so understand the Bible is God's word, right? No, so, so hold say, on now. So, according to God, there's a judgment written on you, whether you think it'll help or not. This is Obadiah chapter one, verse eighteen, and this is what it reads: "And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau, that's you, for stubble." And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. So you believe in God. I mean, this is God's word. I believe, and I believe that. I understand that you don't believe in God. Look, I'm, I'm not. I can't even dialogue <laughs> with you, because um, God, God isn't for you. This God isn't for you. Right, right. Every nation has had their God, right? The God of the Bible is the God of the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's right. The reason you can't get down with the Bible is because you adverse to everything in that Bible. The Bible condemns every action that you have, uh, your people. I never read the Bible. I never read the Bible. I'm not, I'm I mean, not, well, this is. I don't have an agenda. The laws of these nations are based off of biblical principles, right? History, this is the best history book in the world. Right, even scholars that don't believe in the Bible go to the Bible to fill in certain holes they have dealing with historical facts of other nations. Right. Right. So, regardless of if you believe in that, actually, give me Romans three. Give me Romans three. With all due respect, I will have to get going in a bit. We understand that. I mean, you but give me I, Proverbs twenty. I greatly respect what you're doing. I don't believe uh, that, but okay. Why, why am I standing here? I could have Because you're, you're from Europe and this is something that you've never seen before. You've never seen so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans more racist than your own people. That's right. I have seen, I've been in the U.S. But you, have you ever seen brothers and sisters up, or brothers unified like this speaking against the crimes of your people? No. So this is a spectacle to you. Just like the Bible says, we're a spectacle to God and men. No, that's understandable. It's an experience that you've never had before. And it's something that you're going to take to Europe. It's a new idea, a new concept in your head. And this is something... You can't have one today. Go ahead. I... This the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 3. Just because you said you don't believe. For what? If some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid, yeah, yay, Salakia, let God be true, but every man a liar, 
Give me Acts 5 and 29. So, we deal with different religions, different belief systems all the time. We understand that everybody's not going to believe the Bible, right? But throughout history, this Bible aligns with a uh, major events in history. Um, and this was written thousands of years before these things happened, right? It prophesied that we would go on the slave ships right. by the hand of your people thousands of years before it happened. So give me this. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. So we ought to obey God rather than men. We believe God's word over, in, over the word of any man, right? And the reason I know that you don't respect us, you don't love us, you don't care about my people is because the Bible has you down pat, a blueprint of the so-called white man. It speaks about how wicked you are, how bloodthirsty you are. There's no exceptions to that. No, no, no exceptions. You just proved that. Actually, you, we gave you, we tried to give you a chance to prove that you were different and you failed that test. Yeah, you did. No, actually, I believe. You feel busted. No, no, no. You gave me the wrong test. Because you can't choose the test. No, because yeah. you want you want a test that um, that complies with your truth, not with mine. Well, here's the thing: truth is not subjective. Oh. You agree? No, actually, I do believe that. You believe that truth what? is subjective. Well, it can be personalized to your own perspective and your own experience of what, what, how you embody truth, what your understanding is of something. So I do believe it, it has greater understanding. Is, is it true that you're standing on a glass ceiling right now? I don't know. You don't know? You don't know that you're standing on a concrete floor and not a glass ceiling? Oh, well, I, I, thought you, I thought you meant it. Um, no, I mean literally. Metaphorically. No, no, I mean literally. Yeah, of course. Concrete, yeah. The concrete floor, right? So truth is the truth. Let's see what the what the truth is according to God. Psalm 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So what's righteous is determined by God. What's true is determined by God. What the brothers read to you today was the words of God. They didn't give you the wrong test. You were quick to tell us that you helped out in Uganda, that you helped out in Ethiopia. Kenya. And Kenya. These are nations of people that either enslaved us or sold us to your people. So we're not interested in that. That's great. That's between you and them. Y'all could be buddies, y'all could be pals, that's fine. But that does nothing for us. We didn't ask you to build us no electricity. We didn't ask you for any money. We didn't ask you to do anything. But show that your words were true, that you actually felt bad about the things that your forefathers did, and just simply give us a simple gesture of what bowing you down with your face towards earth, and it wouldn't even have changed your day. But you weren't willing to do it. That's why my brother keeps saying that he doesn't believe you. That's why I don't believe you. That's why none of the other brothers believe you, because you couldn't do a simple gesture, but you boast about a grand gesture that you did in Africa. I don't feel that it's under my ownership what descendants in the past have done because they've not done it in my name and I am not believing or living it in their name. I feel it's absolutely terrible what has happened. I feel terrible what Hitler has done in the Second World War. I feel it's terrible what happened all over the world. But I'm not incorporated. But you don't feel like you belong to, you have, you're responsible for that, right? Not at all. So if we were all, uh, let's not say we, if you and your grandfather were in a restaurant and your grandfather just up and ran out the door and the owner of the restaurant's like, well, you got to pay, you're just going to sit there and tell him, well, I don't feel like I'm responsible. I would actually tell him. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to get some legal trouble because you are responsible. I mean, I would, I would feel. You, you, can, feel, you can feel whatever you want. Nobody can change your feelings. Here's what we but your feelings don't change back. Let me help you. Here's what we need to say. I feel that I would not be responsible for my, my grandfather not paying the bill, but I would accept the consequences if they come on my doorpost. But that doesn't mean that I have to apologize for my grandfather being an idiot, but I will accept the consequences. And that's, I think, where I've got in my understanding. And you want me to be honest or you want me to be fake and just to give you a sign that I don't feel. I need to feel it. I need to live it. And um, you don't have to believe anything. You don't have to believe that I 
with back to what you guys do. You don't have to believe that. I think it's horrific and horrendous. I think uh, you're intrigued, at least. What? No, no, this is not it. And I've traveled all over the world. This is not for show or action, whatever. For me, it's I'm being as honest and truthful as I can be. And I'd rather be that, that you guys don't like it, than that I just give you some fake shit where you, where, where you that applies to what you want, but it's not truthful. Uh, no, I get that. I get well, that. I, but when, I when, when, he re- when, way, but I when when we read that Bible verse, we read it with the full expectation that you're not going to bow. Right. Very, uh, every now and again, somebody does, but usually they don't. We, right. yeah, but you don't have to fake it. If I bow for my grandfather, and I need to show in my heart that I'm connected to this nation. And with all due respect, do you believe that you're disconnected from your grandfather? Yes, I do. Would you even exist if not for your grandfather? Well, that is a philosophical act as well, because maybe... Oh, that's a biological that, question. Your your sperm, uh, sorry, your grandfather's sperm was the seed planted to grow your father. Uh, and your father's sperm was you. But well, maybe my mother liked the postman as well, you never know. Well, well, uh, well if that's the case, then the postman's uh, your father. The thing is, it, it, it's different. I know what you mean. And I will think about it, okay? I will think about it, but it goes so deep that I can't just change my understanding or my, my belief. Okay, within a minute, I need time to let it sink in. But I will promise you something before I go. I will promise you something. I will think about it very deep. And for my truth. Okay. Well, before you go, I got one more question for you. That was, I, I didn't even think of that. Are you familiar with a group called GMS Holland? No. Or perhaps Great Millstone Holland? I've not lived in Holland for most of my life. Oh, you don't live there now? No, I've not lived there for a quarter of a century. Well, you said you're going back to Europe next week. Switzerland. Okay. Do we have any? Are there any? In Switzerland, there? they have never done anything. They've been as local farmers as they can be, and I feel more Swiss than Dutch. So. Well, I mean, you can believe that they've never done anything if you want to, well, but yeah, as my but as my as, as, as my brothers have pointed out to you, you guys are not the original inhabitants of Europe. You took it from somebody. So, maybe since then y'all have been chilling. Yeah. But. But then I need to do some homework on it. I also need a little bit of time to dig into it. But at least I, I'm as very as I can. This is Psalm 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Alright, so this, this is why we, we say what we say. When we don't believe the words of the white man, because the words of the white man have always been empty. As far as we've ever seen, as far as history's ever shown, they've always been empty. Like, 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 like what was brought up with the treaties with the Native Americans, 100% of those treaties were violated by the white man, not the Native Americans. The Native Americans kept their word. When, 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 the, when the white man said that he was giving us a, a, a vaccine to fight some disease, he ended up giving us, what was it, syphilis? It was syphilis? Yeah. So we, we trusted the words then. We got a syphilis needle. They trusted the words with the blankets, had smallpox in it. Every time we trust the word and we come in for an embrace, we get a knife in the back. So, so you can understand why we don't trust. Right? So, so if, I, if I can understand what it was that you're saying with the analogy of the restaurant compared to our situation right now with you bowing, right? You're saying that you would not just freely say, here's the money for my grandfather, but when it came time for the authorities to come after you, you would, you would accept you will deal with the consequences. Well, that's fine. That's fine because the consequences are going to be dealt with regardless. So if you don't want to bow now, you will later. Oh. So that's fine. Yeah, it needs to. It doesn't serve anyone if it's done just to just, just to appease anyone. It's going to be done by force uh, next time. This is John eight and forty four. So like, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it.
you know, the devil's the father of lies, and the devil's also the father of the white man. So oh. these things go hand in hand. So like I said, you don't have to bow. You don't have to do any of that right now. But when our king comes back, what's, what's, supposed, to, what's supposed to happen will happen. So just, I just want you to remember this conversation in that day, if it happens within our lifetime, and don't make no excuses for it. I'll be ready. All right. I'm standing ready. All right. This is Revelation 3 and 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Right, and that's about those of your brothers that call themselves Jews, and they're really not. They're going to be made to, to worship at our feet. All right. But I greet you. I respect you. You don't have to believe anything. What I say is also important that I believe you. Because everything else, words like you say, words are always used for power and domination and for... And for trickery, we know, we yeah. know, and and we don't believe that it's a coincidence either that you are wearing a Freddy Krueger shirt. I yeah, think yeah, I think that's very what? poetic. You know what? That's great. You know what somebody else told me, and I don't know Freddy Krueger. I I mean I know Freddy Krueger because I've heard of him, but I never saw the movie. Yeah, the movie yeah. And now and he he was a rapist like, that would kill children in their sleep. Somebody asleep. told me like you know you were, for me this is just a, a blue and a blue a red and blue shirt. But now I understand why people are kind of crossing around me with a wide angle. Thank you for that. I mean, luckily I have another one. All but, right. Uh, yeah. Well, in the meantime, you should check out that movie, see what he's like, and uh, when it's done, just get ready for that slavery. Because it's coming. I'm going to give it back to you. Good, good luck, and thank you for your time. And, uh... All right, bye. Get the hell out of here, man. We don't believe anything you say. Get ready for slavery. We're done. We don't believe anything that you say. And see, this is what you so-called black Spaniards and Native Americans have to understand. Have to understand the Lord has put this decrepit devil over you because you went off and you disobeyed. Give me Lamentations chapter 5, right? okay. and you give me Psalm. Uh, go we don't care what you do, man. Get hit by a car while you do it. Give me Psalm 17 and 3. I mean, 17 and 13, huh? Yeah, whatever, man. Right? And and, and, and and what he does is he puts some homosexual tendency having man over you. Look at this guy, man. Stop standing like that looking at me. You're offending me, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either, you damn homosexual. You're a sodomite, man. Right? Go ahead, up. Lamentations 5 and 7. Our fathers have sinned and are not. Our fathers have sinned and are not. So our fathers have sinned and they're not even alive anymore. But there was a judgment written on us because our fathers have sinned. And it's arrogant for the so-called white man to walk around and be of the mind state that his forefathers can rape, rob, and murder and nothing's going to happen to him because we're in this predicament right now because of what our forefathers went through and the Most High God loves us. So what do you think is going to happen to that damn devil, man? Go ahead. And we have borne their iniquities. And we've borne their iniquities, right? They sinned, they died, and we're here to suffer the consequences from where they went off, right? right. So you got to understand that the Lord created the wicked. Um, give me um, Malachi chapter 1, right? Because according to the Bible, Esau, the Edomites, are the border of wickedness, right? And we're going to go ahead and read that right quick. He keeps looking over here, man. See, well, he wanted a pound. Right? He wanted to have a good night. Man, have a terrible night, man. Oh, Freddy, oh, Freddy Krueger comes to visit you in your sleep. That's what I hope. He's coming, he's coming to get his shirt back. Yeah, go ahead. 